Welcome to Authentically Asian. Today's show is all about sushi. So we're hanging out at Kozoku Sushi in Hollywood where my buddy Sunny is the owner and sushi chef. I'm gonna show you how sushi is kind of an intricate dance between the sushi chef and yourself. You're watching the sushi chef make sushi, but he's also watching you to see how you eat it. Because how you eat it is gonna determine what quality of fish you're getting. So I'm gonna show you how to eat like a pro in the sushi bar, um, also known as don't be the idiot who doesn't know what they're doing. Then we're gonna go back to my house where I'm gonna teach you how to make sushi rice, California rolls, and spicy tuna rolls. So, first things first, chopstick etiquette. Break them quietly. Don't sit there and smash them together like you're trying to make fire. Let's talk soy sauce, wasabi, and ginger. This is not a swimming pool to fill up with soy sauce. You wanna use just enough soy sauce to put a little on each piece of sushi. Second, wasabi is a condiment. It's a little spicy. Never smash your wasabi into the swimming pool of soy sauce. Total amateur move. Third, ginger or gari is a palate cleanser. You wanna take a bite in between every piece of sushi, not eat it like a salad, and definitely don't put it onto sushi. All sushi should be eaten in one bite, no matter if it's nigiri, sashimi, or rolls. Thanks, chef. And make sure that only the fish or the seaweed touches the soy sauce, never the rice. Thank you. Mm. Really good. I think we got it. So now that you know how to eat sushi, it's time to learn how to actually make sushi. So let's do this. To make sushi rice, two important things to remember. A, start with the right rice. It's Japanese short grain rice. Sometimes it'll say short grains, sometimes it'll actually say sushi rice on the bag. Second, know your water to rice ratio and you are good to go. Just remember this, the proper rice to water ratio is one to one. So I've got equal parts rice to water in here. The rice is already in, I'm gonna add the water. I'm gonna cover that turn on the stove and let simmer for about 20 minutes or until the water is completely absorbed. Once that's done, turn off the heat, leave the lid on, leave it alone, it needs a nap. So let your rice rest for at least 45 minutes while we make our sushi vinegar. In a saucepan, I'm gonna add rice vinegar, sugar, after sugar is salt, and you might not know what this is, but it's called kombu. It's basically sea kelp, and that's how you get a lot of nice savoriness into sushi rice. We're gonna bring this to a boil, give it a good stir until it clarifies, let it cool, and it's ready to marry the rice. Your rice is cooked, it's been resting, it's time to fold in the sushi vinegar. You're just gonna rein in the sushi vinegar that you made to distribute it nice and evenly. This motion is called cutting the rice. You're not literally chopping the rice in half. You're really kind of working the large rice balls apart so the vinegar can kind of penetrate and mix in thoroughly. So let's go on to cutting our vegetables. So first vegetable we're gonna cut here is English cucumber. What I'll do is take the ends off. I usually like to throw them at Mike. So uh, Nate, track me here, see if I can do this, ready? Let's go. Almost, I got one more shot here. There we go, let's see if I can get Mike here. Ready, track me. Okay, um, now I like to use my palm to measure cucumbers. So I probably can get three out of here. There's one, two. All right, so what I'm trying to do is cut tiles around the seed pod because the seed pods are not pleasant to eat. I'm gonna cut each tile now into quarter inch lengths. Next, uh, avocado. I take the uh, ends of the avocado off first because I find that it's super easy to peel when you do that. I'm gonna kind of take the knife and gauge the middle point of the avocado, roll the avocado across, twist it open, take the heel of the knife and pop out the seed, just like that. And then because you've taken the tips off, it's gonna be super easy to peel at this point. Angle the knife up, slice this avocado into, again, quarter inch 
tiles. Last, scallions, also known as negi in uh, Japanese. Take the ends off, and then I'm gonna cut the scallions in half, and I like to take the greens and slice them super thin. There it is, all my prep is done. And the three rolls we're gonna make are California rice on the outside, tuna and scallion seaweed on the outside, and I'll show you how to do a spicy tuna hand roll. I like using half sheets of nori. And there's two sides to seaweed. You always want rice to make contact with the rough side. So you wanna start with a tennis ball size of rice, bring it over to the seaweed, and then you want to cover the seaweed about 80%, leaving one strip at the top uncovered. And that's gonna be your leading edge, your rolling edge. And this is the time to apply a little bit of sesame seeds. I'm gonna turn this over. The uncovered part of the seaweed is gonna be closest to my body as I roll up vertically. So a little dash of wasabi about a third of the way from the bottom. And that's also gonna be your line to where you're gonna start putting your ingredients. I'm always gonna start with crab. And I'm hitting that, that crab hard with a K instead of a C, because these are crabsicles, also known as surimi in Japanese, avocado, cucumber, and then taking that seaweed edge, just do a nice loose kind of tuck and roll. You don't want it too loose, you don't want it too tight because the bamboo mat's gonna finish cinching everything down. Turn the roll over, now pack in the other edge. What you're gonna end up with is more of a, a kind of slightly squared off roll. Cutting that slightly squared off roll is gonna give you a nice round shape. You're gonna wet the edge of your knife. Give the knife a tap so the bead of water runs down. And I always start with small sawing action so the knife bites through. And then make sure you feel your knife hit the board because that means you've cut clean through. Once they're cut, a little knob of wasabi and some ginger. And that is how I make California roll. This next roll is a tuna and scallion roll. It's really similar to what Sunny made us in the sushi bar. So for this roll, it's gonna be a skinnier roll and we're gonna lay the seaweed um, horizontally instead of vertically. And remember, rough side, always up, touching rice. Wet your hands. Form your small tennis ball. And again, you're getting about 80% coverage, leaving one strip at the top. Again, always draw a line with wasabi to kind of remind yourself where to lay all your product down. This time, it's gonna be the chopped tuna. It's the same tuna in the spicy tuna roll, but completely unseasoned. And then the scallions. And then I'm gonna bring my, uh, my bamboo mat to the game pretty early here. I'm gonna line up the end of the seaweed with the end of the mat and then finish the roll. Because there's seaweed on the outside, you can manhandle this roll a little more than with the rice on the outside. So this one I'm gonna go into six. I like to cut in half first, line the two edges up together, and cut each into three. And I'm ready to plate this. So in order to make spicy tuna, you're gonna start with a sushi grade tuna, cut it into small pieces, and then we're gonna work in a little bit of mayonnaise, and I'm using Kewpie mayonnaise. These are Japanese mayonnaise and a little bit of sriracha, and I just wanna start giving it a nice, easy slice to kind of start breaking down the bigger pieces. Once the bigger pieces start to get smaller, I can start folding the sriracha and mayonnaise in. And once that starts to stick to the tuna, I can start chopping it now. So I'm chopping and then I'm scraping from the outside and folding them in until it becomes one kind of nice even color. Don't be scared to work in some extra sriracha, chili oil, or even Japanese chili flakes. That is ready to go. So to make your hand rolls, you're gonna start with the same piece of seaweed with the rough side facing you. The wasabi line goes down from the top of the point down to the middle. You're gonna wet your hand so you can grab a nice half a tennis ball worth of rice. And now you're just gonna build. I like cucumbers in the back and make sure whatever you're putting in this roll sticks out of the top piece. So that is gonna be the area that's gonna show off all your product. Some avocado, again, point up, sticking out, and then a nice big fat spoon of spicy tuna. Give it a good press to get it set so it doesn't fall out on you. Once all your ingredients are set, you wanna roll this roll in an arc. It's not a flat roll this way. You're gonna arc this roll like a, like a windshield wiper and that's gonna give you that kind of cone effect just like that. Mm. 
So there you have it, friends. What a sushi adventure we've had today. We started at Kazoku, where we learned proper sushi etiquette. Brought it back home, where we taught you how to make sushi rice, California rolls, tuna rolls, spicy tuna rolls. Now it's your turn to take all this info and bang it out yourselves. We'll see you next time on Authentically Asian.